Hi there. So in the data that you receive and the cases, you, you might realize that you have a compressible data here. So in this video, what we're going to address how to set up this compressible case. So see that you have compressible and compressible, you have velocity profiles and also. So to set up this one, it's not very different. It's pretty much since our same, but the only thing that you now you need to enable know how how to to compute fluid properties. So that's what I'm going to show you how how to do here. It's not that difficult. And in the cases that you have, okay, so you 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 have this case, okay. So if you go in fluid mesh case, you go into turbulence. and see here that you're going to have this one. Why? P1 heated wall. This is the compressible case. So let's open this one. So we don't need to do mesh anything, okay? We have everything predefined here. So I'm just going to address a little bit how to set up sense, okay? So I already opened Fluent here. And if I go here, read case data, okay? I'm reading that case. So there in this case, just to remind you that you have the cast where you have mesh and set up and the dot that where you have the solution okay so we're reading the solution okay see here that plot you have the convergence rate and everything and the difference here that now you have energy equation in this case so how do we set up this case so let's go back here in the vertical workflow okay and we go to the first step nothing changed okay everything is standard now you go models and when you go in models beside the besides this model the turbulence model we have another model which is the energy equations so you need to enable this model so by default this one is disabled when it's disabled means that it is incompressible okay density constant when you enable now you enable the equation of a state to resolve the energy okay so see that in this case, I cannot disable because I have that energy equation. No, the way to compute density enables somewhere else. But this is how you proceed. Enable this, and now you go into materials. And see here, materials. Here's where you set up how to compute density and all properties. Okay, there are models to compute this. So this is the most classic model, the ideal gas, but you have different ways to compute it, okay? So for instance, if I go here and put constant, this is incompressible flow. So now when I put it constant, if I go back here, I can disable this model. It's not, uh, okay, viscosity method also, I need to put it constant. As you go here, you can disable, okay? So this is how we were running previously. Now to enable the energy equation, enable this model, okay? And now when you go to flow, material fluid property you can choose the model so density choose your model so let's say that the most standard one is the ideal gas so you have the equation and the state and from this equation it will compute density value according to temperature or pressure and the rest of the properties also you can define models so we can do it also for viscosity okay so in viscosity okay let's use the Sutherland model okay and three coefficients okay and if you want, you can do it also for thermal conductivity. You have different models. You can have polynomial models. It's up to you, okay? But these are the two models that we're going to use, okay? I'm going to enable the compressible flow. That's all. The rest is pretty much the same, okay? So now when we are working compressible flow, this is important. When you go in Celsius conditions, remember that previously I mentioned that this is a constant, the, the pressure. Now in compressible flows, this is important. Why? Because if you put this to zero, it means that you are working in the in vacuum. And in the vacuum, remember also in the theory, we, we studied the Knudsen coefficient and those parameters. The navier stokes equations are not valid anymore. So you have to be careful, okay, how you, when you are working in compressive given uh, realistic values, okay? So here you give, let's say that, let me give a standard atmospheric pressure, okay? This is very important, okay? And now in boundary conditions, it's the same as setup, inlet, but when you go into inlet, outlet, and wall, see that now you're going to have a new tab, thermal. Now, besides giving velocity and turbulence intensity, in thermal, you can give temperature. So see here that I'm telling that at the inlet, the flow is centering with this temperature, Kelvin, 300 Kelvins, which would lie 30, it will be like 30 Celsius, something like that. Okay, it's 275, so yeah, 
about no almost 30 yeah it's 26 celsius okay and as you go now to outlet see that in the outlet also you have the thermal this setup is exactly the same and now thermal also you set the backflow conditions remember we talk about ba what backflow condition and you go on the wall also you will have now also that auction enabled besides the standard ones thermal and you can set up temperature and see that in this case at the wall and heating that wall so the flow is entering with 300 kelvins and the walls are heated at 350 kelvins you have different ways okay you can set up heat flops convection whatever it's okay these are also different models so i'm setting this one temperature 250 it's a heated wall and that's all okay these options nothing change methods remains unchanged pretty much the same okay and now see here that now, now that you have energy also you have access to heat transfer rate so i added that monitor to compute heat transfer rate okay because if i go here reports let me go here and that is a flux like the wall see that i can know that i know my heat transfer rate and also the method is conservative so see that this quantity should be very low close to zero so it's not close close to zero but look at the order of magnitude so this the percent is very low less than one percent of the overall okay so you compute all your fluxes okay so basically what i did here is just i put this monitor here when you run you can see all that monitor as well and initialization Okay, so you go to initialization and let me show you standard see that now you have a new variable so see that you need to initialize also temperature okay new variable and when you run just put it there so let me run a few iterations so to show you let me switch off this so see that here you have more equations but basically because you have the energy okay see the energy equation usually the energy also they, they it should converge well okay usually it's a low value for the tolerance uh okay let me disable and let me run 50 iterations okay to show you so see continuity momentum energy and tolerance model so remember also the turbulence models they have correction according you know, to the energy equation okay so in this case velocities are low so we don't need to enable those equations but sometimes if you have high speed flow shock wave stuff stuff like that it is a good idea to add some corrections in the turbulence model but here you see the quantities okay the convergence so see that we restarted from a previous solution okay we didn't need we didn't need to restart from zero your mass flow okay so now it's a low quantity y plus value low values and your heat transfer rate remember that also we saw in the theory that there is a correction to the y plus according to the prandtl number that now that prandtl number exists here okay there is a quantity we have the molecular one and also the turbulent prandtl number okay so let, let, let let me finish running this 50 iteration just to show you also that we have that Prandtl number. So now we have more information and we can access more information when we are doing the post processing. So besides the standard values, we're accessing also temperature Prandtl number stuff like that. Very important just to remind you again here now as you are working in, in compressible flows you cannot use anymore the, the dynamic similarity like in compressible that the Reynolds number can control everything now here you need to give the actual physical properties of the flow okay so you need to give the actual physical properties of density for air or water whatever for the temperature viscosity and also you need to set up the 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 reference pressure because if you put that one that you are working in vacuum we know that at the vacuum navier stoll's equations they break out they are not valid anymore okay so you need to think about that when setting compressible cases okay in three more iterations two will be done and voila we're done so see here that you have the total heat transfer rate and pretty much there are oscillations but they are relatively low you know, in comparison to the other man magnitude so you have something about 3500 and then the oscillations are about 7 okay so it's very small so you can take this for granted that is a good converge 
solution. Okay, so just to show here, now you go here in graphics and see that now you will have this new tab, density. And as you plot here, you will see, you will be able to see the density variations. Okay, so see that according to temperature, we know that density will change. We, got, we have the equation of a state in this case, or you can put any equations according to you. Okay, then you have also temperature, a static temperature, so temperature variation. So ideally this call, then see here that it get heated. Okay, the wall is heated. Probably if you rerun this case with a longer pipe, you're going to get a different behavior now. And well, the rest were also probably in velocity. Now also we might get access to Mach number. You have it there, look at that. You have Mach number, it's a really low. Mac number, you have access to that. You have access to the speed of sound. So as you go here in properties, is what we call, see here that you have sound speed. Okay, you have sound speed there. And then also you have the constant gas concept, CP, the molecular planar number. Okay, and then as you go into the turbulent tab, you will see that here we have the turbulent planar number. I don't see it somewhere, you should have that but you have access to, to all, all those quantities, okay? So this is how you do compressible cases, okay? So in this case, the compressibility is due to a heated wall, but also remember that that compressibility can be due to high speed flow, okay? But the approach is pretty much the same. The tor turbulence treatment is pretty much the same. There are some different ways of doing averaging later when we uh, deal with advanced topic, we're going to see that, which, which is called FAF, Averaging, which is kind of a mass weighted average, but the idea is pretty much the same as the Reynolds average. So this is all for this case. Okay, I think I hope you you got the gist how to do the the compressible case. So now we move to the final video where I'm going to show you how to do the post process in the Y plus in, in, in direct influence. By the way, remember here you have the lines. And if you want, if you want to save that information here, so you can go plot along the line. See here that you have the same profiles. You can have also the temperature profile. See the wet, the wall is heated, 350, and like this. So remember when we were looking at the theories, you have a laminar flow. You are not going to have this this heat transfer rate like this, you have something different, okay? So the heat transfer from the wall to the core of the flow is very different, okay? So this is it. This is how you set up the case, as you see, it's pretty much the same. The only thing is that you need to enable the new models here and here. Okay, thank you for your attention. See you in the next video. Bye.